Hello everyone, Boulevard here, but today you can call me Blocker Boulevard because we're about to do some math. So about six-ish months ago, we were coming up on a seasonal and Heimer Jace was pretty popular, so I took to Twitter to ask LOR senior game designer Ruben Zhu how production surge works on the back end because there were two ways I could see it working, each with unique RNG. I received my answer on Twitter, but with Heimer Jace picking up in popularity again, now seemed like a good time to put the explanation in video form like I always wanted to. So let me change clothes real quick and... Holy shit, these are dirty. Let's talk about how production surge functions. In each example, we're going to be casting production surge for three mana with no units in play as it keeps the math simple but demonstrates the differences in outcome. In scenario one, production surge looks at your board space and mana and determines all the possible turret combinations you could get and then rolls the dice. With three mana spent, we could either get an MK3, an MK2, and an MK1, or three MK1s. In this scenario, there are three outcomes and thus an equal 33% chance of each outcome. In scenario two, production surge looks at your maximum mana, then spits out a turret of equal or lesser cost. Then, if there's mana and board space remaining, it does that again, and so on and so forth until you are either out of mana or board space. So essentially, in scenario one, all turrets are rolled at the same time, and in scenario two, they're rolled one at a time. So what's the difference? We already ran the math on scenario one, nice and uniform, equal chances for each outcome. In scenario two, you have an equal chance to roll each turret to kick things off, but things quickly deviate. So you have a 33% chance to roll an MK3, and if you do, the whole thing stops there. That outcome has a 33% chance to happen. Same thing with MK2. If you hit that first, the only thing left to do is roll an MK1 and you are done. But if you roll an MK1, you then have a 50% chance to roll either a second MK1 or an MK2. So, while you have a 33% chance to roll an MK1 as your first turret, you then split that chance between MK2 and MK1 as the second turret. And so, with the positional order not mattering to you as the player, you actually end up with this breakdown. A 33% chance to roll an MK3, a 50% chance to roll an MK2 and an MK1, and a 17% chance to roll an M three MK1s. Now, that is rounded off a little bit, but still, that is a pretty big difference and is also the way that production surge works. Now, there are some other relevant restrictions to the card. Please note, we're about to get very technical, and also, I haven't taken algebra in like 10 years, so I might make this a little more complicated than it needs to be, but we're going to try to keep it simple. There are three variables of production surge. We have X, which is the total amount of mana that you spent on production surge. We have T, which equals 1 through X, but is always less than 9, and that represents the dice on which a turret will be rolled. T repeats until X equals 0. And then B equals board space. This is all a technical way of saying that you can't roll a 9 mana turret because it doesn't exist, and you can't roll a 0 mana turret. The exception, of course, is that if you spent 0 mana on production surge, you will always get a single MK0. Another important thing to note is that if B equals 1, T equals X. And what that means is that if you only have one board space remaining, you will always roll the largest turret possible for that last space. In these examples, you notice I roll a 1 mana turret first, then an 8 mana turret, since that is the largest possible turret for the last board space. Surge doesn't take pity on you and high roll until you only have one space left, so don't play Surge for 12 with two board spaces thinking you are guaranteed to get 12 mana worth of turrets in those two spaces, because you are not. Now, I've mentioned a few times that I don't know anything about coding, so I can't make this, but a super useful tool for the community would be a calculator that lets me put in two variables, X and B, the amount of mana I spent on Surge and the board space I have open, and then tells me the percent chance of each possible outcome. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist yet and likely will not exist by this weekend at the WCQ, so you'll have to do your math by hand, but I hope this helps you make the optimal play more often now that you know how the card works.